This is your Barbados Today evening news update for January 10. Strike action by taxi operators in the city was averted after a special meeting called resulted in an amicable resolution. Over the weekend, taxi drivers in Bridgetown threatened to withdraw their services after a breakdown in talks to find a suitable space for them to conduct their business in Fairchild Street. Glendon Gordon, treasurer of the Barbados Taxi Alliance, told Barbados Today the situation developed after the Fairchild Street vendors market began last year. Chaos, basically. Uh, a hectic area. Fairchild Street is a very hectic area. Uh, morning, mostly in the evening as well. Um, difficulty for guys to get parking space. Um, and then it's, it, you're constantly being pushed. Uh, you, you have police officers constantly on your case, even if you stop to pick up people, you know, or load groceries. Um, there's some other parking spaces that were further across, closer to Massey, but at the end of the day, you get elderly people coming up to the supermarket. You're not going to walk that far. So, you know, something needed to be done in order to, to give us some kind of reassurance that we could be comfortable in playing our trip. CEO of Hague Communication, Joanne Haig, led talks with taxi men, members of the Barbados Police Service and the Barbados Fire Service to settle the matter. So we are here today because the Taxi Association, obviously are the concern about the taxis not being returned here when the vendors were returned. Uh, there seemed to be some miscommunication, so we're just here to correct it because they're supposed to be done by Probin Street, by the side of the umpire. But we understand that, you know, there are about 50, 60 of them and we don't want it to be at a disadvantage. So we came together and this is the start, I believe, of the a better structure for the city as, a, as, a, as it relates to taxi drivers. So we've decided that when we are constructing the, the kiosk for the 39 um, for the vendors that have to return, we're going to build, um, they're going to construct at least 39 car spaces and about 12 of them now we've committed to give them to the taxis. The other spaces are for the vendors and for customers. We're also looking at now by next to the park, there by Jordan's, there's about, it's not a big car park, but we might probably try to see what we can release there about four. To news from the campaign trail, the president of the Democratic Labour Party, Verla de Pisa, has set out a bold agenda to fix the island's fiscal space and improve accountability within the first 90 days of office if elected on January 19. Speaking at the party's candidate showcase last evening, she touted plans to introduce integrity in public life legislation, the removal of the foreign exchange fee, and new provisions for credit unions, among other things. De Pisa said the first order of business is the introduction of fiscal responsibility laws that will ensure Barbados operates within its means and is able to pay its debts going forward. We have to have an annual debt ceiling so that we keep within manageable targets and we have right now to be able to give ourselves a little room so the debt to GDP target will be 60% of GDP because you don't need to have a little wiggle room. And this sets a landscape for all of the provisions that you will make. But it can't work if you don't have checks and balances. And I don't think there is a Barbadian alive within the hearing of my voice whether in front of me or online, who is not sick and tired of reading one after the other the Auditor General's reports and having a 15 minutes of fame or infamy depending on what it contains and then it peters out. And so, because it is not about traipsing civil servants to account, it is ministerial responsibility and ministers under a new Democratic Labour Party administration will have to respond to the issues raised in Auditor General's reports. The Democratic Labour Party candidate for St. Michael's Central, Corey Cox, has pledged that if elected on January 19, one of his first jobs will be to remedy the existing grievances of striking nurses. Cox, the DLP spokesperson on Labour, has vowed that the issues will be addressed within the first two weeks on the job. 
because it nurses and it's scot free. I can tell you something. If by any chance, not even if by any chance, they voted the pizza. I heard team claim those steps of parliament. One of them will not be left out. One of the first things we intend to do is to ensure that we address the nurses in this country and what they are going through. My heart bleeds for the nurses tonight. The issues of the nurses, ladies and gentlemen. A new Democratic Labour Party administration will provide the nurses with the conditions of work, uniforms and equipment, compensation that they have been agitated for. All these will be facing in the beginning, in the first 14 months, on the first 14 days on the job. And completely within the first 12 months, ladies and gentlemen, of this new DLB administration. Barbadians will soon have the opportunity to own shares and invest in the Sam Norris Castle Hotel. This announcement was made by Home Affairs Minister Wilfred Abrams while speaking to party supporters on Sunday during the mass meeting. He said that if the BLP is returned to office, Barbadians can expect more investment opportunities. One of the critical things we're going to do is we will, as a government, divest ourselves of the ownership and the interest in San Lord's Hotel and its surrounding lands. We plan to give that as an investment opportunity to ordinary Barbadians and to the credit union movement. The credit union sprung as an alternative to formal banking because a lot of people could not access the formal banking structure. The rules were a little bit too strict. It was difficult. The fees were too much. And the credit union came out of the, the susu, the, 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 you all know the susu, right? The meeting turn. How many Bajans have actually managed to do constructive things through meeting turn? How many of you all fixed your houses through meeting turn? How many of you might have bought a car or bought a gift for your wife through meeting turn? That's right. The credit union came from that. And for us to advance as a people, we need to enfranchise the credit union movement. We need to give the ordinary Bajan a chance to own something substantial, not to collect a pittance of interest from the bank. The banks don't give you interest now. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. There were 387 new cases of the viral illness, 172 males and 215 females recorded on Sunday from the 1,690 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the new cases, 84 persons were under the age of 18 and 303 were 18 years and older. The number of persons in isolation facilities was 105, while 3,243 were in home isolation. As of January 10, there were 266 deaths from the virus. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness sought to clear the air on the ambiguity surrounding the Maroons and their self-government claims. The Prime Minister asserts that there is no other state in the country but the politically elected government of Jamaica. We get the details from CVN Television. The Prime Minister was firm in asserting that the constitutionally elected government is the authority. The comment came as the Maroons have postured themselves as a sovereign government. Jamaica is a unitary, sovereign state. 
There is no other sovereign authority. This comes just after the ritualistic Maroon Fest that saw loads of people flooding into a compound for the annual event. The St. Elizabeth police, however, warned citizens not to attend the event, as a gathering with more than 10 people would be a breach of the Disaster Risk Management Act. The Prime Minister says the premise of the Maroons operating independent of the government poses a threat to the stability of the state. What you are asking would be another for the government of Jamaica to fund, take taxpayers' money and grant funds to fund another government. This is not a government saying they are a local government. On the international front, Novak Djokovic was back in training hours after winning a court challenge to remain in Australia on Monday, thanking the judge who released him from the immigration detention and saying he remains focused on trying to win a record 21st tennis major tournament. More in this report from Reuters TV. From one court to another, Novak Djokovic is back in training. The men's world tennis number one was released from Australian immigration detention on Monday after winning a legal challenge to remain in the country and defend his Australian Open title. Fans in Australia and back home in Serbia welcomed the news that Judge Anthony Kelly had found the Australian federal government's decision to cancel Djokovic's visa to be unreasonable because the player wasn't given enough time to speak to tennis organisers and lawyers to respond fully after he was notified of the intent to cancel his visa. The tennis star's family, including brother George, were delighted with the ruling. I gotta say how, how much I admire Judge Kelly and the way he led with the whole court process because I think uh, it was very detailed, it was very thorough and it was very neutral and I, you know, I want to thank him in front of the family for leading the process in such way. That's news but for the very latest you can visit us at www.barbilistoday.bb You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.